Hello, hello, Teach Parties of Wisdom, and uh, today we're going to be talking about something that came to me in a dream. It's kind of crazy, yeah, this came to me in a dream, and I, I woke up, I was like, whoa, I was kind of onto something. And then I made this podcast, so this is me pretty quickly after waking up. I mean, it's a weekend, so it's not like I woke up super early or anything. So, okay. So, in the dream, basically, I was making a podcast. I was with these two other people. I don't think I knew them. But in the dream, I felt like I knew them for a while. But, yeah. We were going to, well, not we. Because they were just, like, co-hosts. They were just, like, random people who were by. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. Let me make a podcast about this. And I did. And in the podcast, I was talking about a proper explanation of how time works. And I was going on and on, and then I woke up, like, halfway through. But when I woke up, I was like, wait a minute. I I know how this ends. So I was like, let me make this podcast before I forget. Because I know how dreams are. Half of the time, you forget if you don't, like, write it down or talk about it immediately. Even though I don't think I would have forgot this one, because it's pretty good. So, okay. So basically, time. All these theories of how time works. Oh yeah, you go back in time. Oh yeah, when you do this, yeah, time moves forward, but it moves backwards. Yeah, you just need to go fast and speed light and blah 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 blah. It's all BS. It, all of it. It's all BS. This is the truth. How time works. I don't know if it's been said before. I don't know if like maybe there was a nugget of truth or something that someone said and it stayed in my mind and then I had a dream about it. But this is my theory. It could be based on something else, I don't know. Because it seems a little too good for it to just only come from me, but whatever. Okay, now done with all the, uh, what do you call it? The delaying. Here is the theory. So time is like a river. And you are a pebble. Or let's say you're a stone. And before anyone says some bull crap, you are a stone in a wide river, an actual river. Don't be like, oh, boy, the stone, it blocks the, the pathways, then you stop time. No, you are a freaking stone in a river like the size of the Mississippi River. So no freaking blocking or whatever. It's a huge freaking river. And this is, not, we're not going to be going super complicated about it and being like, oh, Oh, what if there are rapids and there's like a serpent kind of thing? Like a tornado, water tornado, so you're stuck in time loop. No, we're not going that deep into it. Like maybe there's other crap, but for this explanation, we're not going that deep. So anyway, time is like a river. A wide, two-dimensional river just flowing. And there's no like changes in the flow. It's just a solid flow that just goes straight. And you are the pebble, just being, or pebble, the stone, whatever, just along for the ride, just being pushed by the current. Pushed, pushed, pushed. And there's nothing you can do about it. You're just being pushed by this massive freaking body of water. And it's not like you can stop it. You can't stop your movement. You're just a stone being pushed. You can't turn. It's all based on the river. Maybe the river uh, splits. You don't know. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't choose. Time pushes you. But let's say you want it to. I don't know. Some type of proof. Because that's what the. In the dream. I was trying to show that you could. I could prove that time. You can time travel. But it's based on the. Technically the future. Like you can't move through time. But. You can prove that time exists. If that makes sense. So now that you know that the river is constantly pushing you, the stone constantly around, there's nothing you can do about it. How do you time and travel then? We know you can't travel back in time. That's impossible. Why? Because the river is always constantly pushing you. So even if you were to move faster or slower you're still further ahead than your the spot you were so even with this bull crap we're like oh yeah time slows down when uh when you move yeah it slows down but you can't go back just like a river 
even if you slowed down your movement, you're still further ahead than you were before. You just slowed. So that means the only type of time travel is future travel, technically. So how would you move there? Basically, you have to send a message. That's it. That's all you can do as a person in the present. You can send a message to the future. So with the river example, all you can do is make a object that can flow through the river faster than the dense stone. So let's say it's a leaf. Somehow the stone makes a leaf. So a leaf is lighter than a stone, so it'll flow through that river faster instead of the stone rolling on the bottom of the river or whatever. So you make a leaf, and now it flows through the river way faster, way faster. So it's ahead in the river. So now let's say after a certain point, of leaving the leaf alone, uh, the leaf is a mile ahead of the river. Now remember, that stone is still moving too, but just slower. But that leaf is like a mile ahead of the river. So now, let's say the stone, the stone of the future, is at that spot a mile ahead of the river. So now, somehow they grab the leaf. So now after grabbing the leaf, they see the message. They're like, ooh. Someone in the past sent a message forward to this spot. So then how do they send a message back to the past? Well, now let's say they create a massive boulder, even bigger than the stone. So now it rolls even slower through the river. So now that original time, that original stone of time, catches up to the huge stone. It's still going to take a while, but they catch up to it because the stone's moving faster, and technically that big boulder is moving slower. So then that stone that was in the back of the river catches up. And now they capture that huge stone, and they read this message. And they're like, oh, we got a message. It's kind of complicated to say without visuals, but I hope you kind of understand that the, 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 the stones are the same. Like those stones that are rolling through the river those ones are technically the same, but when you move ahead of the river, you're ahead in time, the flow of time. And when you have something that moves faster, that's moving faster than time. Or tech, Well, they're not moving faster than time because time is constant, but it's flowing faster through time. Because the stone is denser or heavier. And then, say, the boulder, the boulder's even heavier than the stone, so that moves slower through time. So when you move, put the leaf on the river, it'll flow faster. So the things in the future, if they capture the leaf, they'll be able to read it and see that it was from the past. And then if they make a big boulder, it will move slower. So if they're already ahead of time, but this is basing off, it's kind of hard to think about, but this is basing off that there are multiple times in the future that you can send back. Like, ugh, how, how do I explain this? Like, it's basing it off of, like, there is, like, if you move off of the, quote, time plane, there will be another stone there that is technically the future. But your stone is still there. Rolling along. Oh, it's hard to explain. I don't know how I, I hope how I don't know how to explain it in a visual way on an audio medium. The only thing I can say is those stones in the rivers. I hope you can piece together my nonsense that I'm saying. Like remember that I kind of just woke up, so I uh, I don't uh, That's all I can really say. That's all I can really say. And I just hope someone can understand. Because it's a complicated topic, especially to talk about through a audio thing. Like, if I had pictures, this would be so simple. But I don't. So basically, what I'm saying is we're in a constant speed. We can't change our speed. Or, like, in our viewpoint, we can't change our speed. Like, we can't go back in time. But we can send stuff forward in time. And once we send something forward in time which is moving faster than our time stone, we put a leaf, a, a message leaf in the river. The leaf moves ahead because it's faster. It's flowing through the river faster. 
and then you can send something back. But the only way you send something back is that you send something that's way slower because it's really, really heavy. So it moves slower. Remember, it can't stop because that river is powerful. You can't, you can't like grab onto the gr ground because there's no, no, think about it. I guess there's no like ground to grab onto, but it can flow slower. It can almost seem like it stopped, I guess, if you make something big enough, but it's not actually stopped. But basically you, you slow it down and then that pass that set the leaf, it finally catches up. It catches up to the boulder because the boulder, you know, stops moving a mile ahead. So now the, the stone moves for a mile. So it's still a future. Technically, they have to reach the time that the leaf reached. So let's say you send a message and you don't open it for 25 years, which is that leaf. So you send the leaf up for 25 years. It moves through time faster for 25 years until fi someone finally opens up the leaf to read the message written on it. Now that the stone that let out the leaf, they have to wait 25 years to finally read the message. But once they read the message, they'll see, oh, someone left a message back. Because there's this thing that's moving really slowly through time that we can grab onto. So it's kind of weird, it's kind of useless in a way. If you think about it, time travel, because what do you get? What can you possibly learn from it other than knowing that there was a future to have learned something from? Like the only people who would gain something are the people in the future because they will read the message and be like, oh, I got a message from the past. But then you might as well just have something not move or like move with you. Like you might as well have just write a message, like a time capsule, basically. The only, only thing I can think of that would be worth is if you personally just wanted to go into the future. That's it. You just wanted to go into the future. You don't care about sending a message. You just wanted to send things, something to the future. So when you move something through time faster to you, let's say it was a five, a five minute journey, but Technically, you move 25 years in five minutes. So, I guess it's useful for travel, like literal travel. Like, let's say you need to travel to Mars. It's a three-year journey, but you're on the leaf. So that three-year journey was only five minutes to you. But sending a message back in time, the boulder example, I don't see how that's useful. Because all it does is it moves slower through time. But people still have to reach that time point. Like you can't go backwards. Like if you could find a way to go backwards, it would be worth it. But with my example that time is a constant river, there is no going backwards. So yeah, that's basically it. Uh, I don't know what else to say. I kind of solve time. So anytime you hear about people go going back, you know it's a waste of time. You can't change time. That's the... That's the moral of the story. You can't change it. On a locu. Ooh, 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 ooh. Wait a minute. There's there's a second part. Which kind of has to do with it, but say dimensions. Let's say there's a dimension where, I don't know, you decided to not do something. And that changed everything. Well, other people would be like, oh yeah, you're, you're a change. That's the time. That if you go in the past and kill blah, 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 that changes everything. And now it changes your future. Nope. That's a separate river. A completely separate river. A different river that you can never reach. The only way you would... Because how do you go to a different river? You're already in this massive river. That you can't even stop in. So how do you jump out of the river and go to a different river? There is no way. The only way is with external methods or whatever. Like... Basically, there has to be someone outside of the river who decides, I'm going to pick up this pebble or this stone and throw it in the other river. Just just for the heck of it. Just to see how that stone rolls. But that's basically a god. Or I guess someone who's outside of the river, outside of the dimensions, I guess. But you would have to be able to convince it to throw you in the other river for whatever reason. 
And who knows, that could mess stuff up. What if the stones run into each other and you just messed everything up? Now one stone's moving past it. Or, well, maybe not going to have an issue. I don't know. But basically, yeah, the only way is if a god decides to put you in a new dimension. Because that river, you can't leave the river. You don't even know you're in a river. But yeah, that explains dimensions too. You can't jump dimensions. No, you can go back in time. The paradox. Blah, blah, blah. No, the paradox doesn't exist. That's just a thought question that has no connection to reality. In real reality, it's a separate river. And the only way to go to that separate river is if something takes you out of it. Because you can't take yourself out of it. It's not like you can jump. And then not only jump, but you jump so wide that you jump wider than the Mississippi River as a, as, as a stone. And then you go across whatever is between the rivers, the nothingness, and then jump into another river. No, that's, that's not possible. That's not feasible. It's the only way is with a god. Uh, yeah, so... Is there anything else? There's the separate rivers, there's the time travel... There's this going back through time. You could argue that the only way you can go back through time is again with that God. He puts his hand in and places you backwards. Um, nope. I think that's it. So yeah, I basically solved time travel in uh, 30 years. They're going to come back and be like, Whoa, actually, he was 100% right. We finally did the math. And uh, it turns out, yeah, uh, we were idiots. And Jabari was a genius that was just un un uh, undiscovered for whatever reason. Uh, sucks. But yeah, he was right. Uh, he, he was a genius of our time. So yeah, um, that's it.